Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello, hello and welcome to mystery mold number 97. We have a kind of like a coffin shaped mold this time and it's got three holes each getting smaller as they go down. I pour it up and open it to reveal this set of three. It is so sweet. So we've got a little tiny bee, a bigger bee and what appears to be a little hummingbird. So I did actually have a lot of issues with this mold this time. Not with the bees, but with the hummingbird. The hummingbird, as you can see, is sitting on that angle and it has a long beak. And each time I poured it, the beak would break every single time. So here's a look at the mold to have a look if you would like to get it for yourself. It was quite dirty inside. It was definitely home for someone special, but they've left now and I'm going to be using it and removing their little debris there. So yeah, this hummingbird, I sadly only got three casts out of it uh, and you'll see that I did so many bees because I tried it so many times and I mean, I should have just tried pouring the hummingbird a few times, but I love the bees so much that if I was going to pour it I want to pour all of them at once. The beak of the hummingbird is so so thin it is so so narrow I tried pulling it out early I tried pulling it out later I tried putting less clay in I tried more clay I tried thin clay I tried thick clay it was just one of those molds where the design itself was just prone to cracking just because of how narrow it is. I also said before that I got three out of this mold the third one the third one I bisque fired and it actually broke on the table of the bisque firing and I I could not be I could not believe it so I've only ended up getting two of these beautiful hummingbirds so for the coloring of these ones I'm going in with a gradient of blue to purple and I'm just sort of dabbing it on really gently it probably looks like it's quite a basic design but I am gonna do antiquing on these again because the feather details are just so gorgeous I think they're gonna look so lovely with this beautiful gradient color and then adding a black antique wash over the top to sort of highlight those details that have been carved in but also add some dimension and texture to the colors I think it's just gonna look really great onto the bees I did these with with a mustard yellow and then a blue banded bee as well so in previous video of a bee I talked about how Australia has a native bee that is actually blue and it's this shimmery iridescent color and they are so so gorgeous I personally haven't seen one myself I know they are in my hometown but I've never yeah I've never actually seen one I, I mean maybe I have and I just thought it was like a blue fly or something I'm not sure Anyway, I add the colors to their stripes and I'm going in a little bit rough, I would say. Like, it doesn't look like I'm being very precise with my brush, but I'm going back in with a brown, as you can see here, where I dab this sort of color on to make it this very uh, texture. Because you know how bees are kind of furry? So the brown doesn't look as, I guess, like realistic as what a bee would be. And we, we don't aim for realistic, okay? We, we aim for imagination. But it did end up having a bit of a purpley tinge in comparison to the blue. I was trying not to let that get to me too much because I'm also going to go over these with a black antique wash. So I'm hoping that that will tone it all down and make it feel a little bit more moody than what it feels right now. As it is right now, these would be a cute set anyway, but that's what I'm doing to make it match in with that hummingbird because the hummingbird feels so realistic, whereas these bees feel a bit more cartoony. So doing them similar is a way that I'm going to try and bring them together as a set. So if I paint painted these like that I, and left them like that, I feel like they would have just looked like a different artwork altogether. So now that they are done, I get a few questions from people asking me how I do this because I don't show you all the steps and that's partly because, well, I should show you all the steps. I don't know, sometimes I just get swept up in the moment. But after I do that under glazing that I just did all the color, I then pop them back onto in, into the bisque firing and then I bake that color on. Once they've come out of the bisque firing, that is when I add this black wash. So they've got, they go through a, an extra firing just to do this antiquing detail. Once they have been bisque fired, I add this wash and then I let it dry and then I wipe it off. So here I am adding to all the little bees and as you can see here, this is how many times I poured it. This is how many times I poured it trying to get 
a hummingbird to work. And my gosh, we had some casualties. We had some casualties. You can see here that there are three hummingbirds. I'd gotten so far along in the process that I was just like, we're firing this one anyway. We're doing it because I, I feel like we just need at least one. And in case another one breaks, I'd rather just at least have a spare one. So I wipe away the underglaze and I do this with a fairly damp sponge. It's just to make sure that there's enough moisture and I'm gently rubbing it away to make sure that I'm not being too wet because if you, you add too much moisture, you actually end up just wiping it all off and you can actually then wipe some of the underglaze that you've baked on off as well if you do it too aggressively. So it's like a nice balance of sponging, even though this looks really like like I'm not really doing anything so I wipe all of those off and then it was time to bisque fire again the reason why I bisque fire it a second time is because I find that when I glaze at this stage I have a bit of like a repellent of the glaze from the underglaze so I think it doesn't like the moisture that's left on the surface from the sponging and the underglaze so it sort of repels it doesn't seep into the clay body as much as I want it to so these went in for that additional firing like I said before now that they've been bisqued for the second time into the glaze they go and I did this by just dunking one wing in and then waiting for that to dry and then dipping that little tip of the wing back in on the other side. For this set of three, I knew exactly what I wanted to make them for, which was really helpful to the design and creation process was that I wanted these to be plant stakes that sit in either your inside plant friend or outside in your garden. So I wanted them to shimmer and have these beautiful reflections of light as they dance in your flower bed. So I've added an opalescent glaze on top to give them this extra element of shimmer. I could have also achieved this with a pearl luster, but I didn't have time for an additional firing this time because as you may know, this is mold number nine. 97 and there are only a couple more reveals left and I'm getting ready for Christmas so we are running out of space with my tiny baby kiln yes I'm getting a bigger kiln in the new studio but we are pushing its limits at the moment so this was the best option to get that effect without having to do an additional luster firing. I popped these into the kiln and I actually had a lot of difficulty getting them to sort of sit nicely and I was so worried they were going to topple over and move as they swelled in the heat of the kiln. I was worried they were going to like wobble over. The last hummingbird I popped in there, you can see it's missing the beak there, but I actually had issues with the hummingbird again because they're resting on their beak that one without the beak was struggling so I actually tried out a little kiln stilt to see if it would work if these kiln stilts would work and it actually did a really great job it wasn't it was great that it was sort of broken because I could sort of test it without worrying about the base of breaking because it was already broken but then this happened oh no <laughs> Oh, they are fused. <gasps> oh no, I should have left them. I ended up having those two fall into each other and stick together and I should have just left them. Anyway, so that was my two kind of fails for this week. I then decided to get to it and start turning these into some gorgeous little plant stakes. So I got this really thin piece of dowel from my local hardware store and I just used circuitous to snip it. I tried sawing it and then my partner was like, what are you doing? You could just cut it. And I was just like, ah, ha, ha. yeah, I could. <laughs> that's not me being silly I just thought like I don't know why just a big thick bit of dowel would need to be sawed but anyway we got there in the end and discovered that we could cut it I added the E6000 glue into the bees and then popped the little dowel pieces inside I did actually seal these pieces of dowel this time to make sure that they're a bit protected from that that wood rot they will eventually deteriorate like the oil will eventually break down on these so they will need to be re-oiled like anything that's outside that's wood it will eventually rot if you don't maintain it 
but I popped those sticks in, I let them set and here they are. They look so, so great. So with the little bits of dowel, I popped all the bees, I was gonna call them animals, all the bees and the birds on different angles so that they look like they're flying in different ways above the garden. And then I went outside and had a bit of a play in my flowers. They look so, so magical and so wonderful. I actually left a set of three out in my garden after I filmed this because I actually lost them in the bed, which I love because it's kind of like, can you spot the little bee? Like what's a real bee? What's not a real bee? I just, I think these are really, really great. And I think they look so magical, whimsical. They shimmer exactly the way I wanted them to. I'm, I'm really impressed with these. Despite the issues I had, I really love them and I hope you like them too. Let me know what you think of these ones in the comments. Again, thank you so much for watching this week's YouTube. Here is a sneak peek to number 98. Oh my gosh, we're so close to 100. Let me know what you think it might be in the comments.